sarcasm, derived from the Greek sarx, or flesh, is a religious philosophical system that encompasses a variety of traditions, beliefs, and spiritual practices largely based on teachings attributed to the Grand Karstus Ion, its defied founder. Adherents practice ritual cannibalism, human sacrifice, corporeal augmentation, thaumaturgy, dimensional manipulation, and the formation of pacts with otherworldly entities. Organic manipulation has allowed certain sarcocytes to achieve anomalous states of being, transcending the physical limitations of baseline humans. Highly secretive, the general public appears to have no direct knowledge of their existence, the one exception being the Church of the Broken God, which views them in apocalyptic terms. Footnote 1 Note, Certain splinter sects, such as the Church of Maxwellism, generally view sarcasism as either destroyed thousands of years ago or is simply an allegory for the imperfection of organic life and for those who are tethered to their base biological nature. Diseases viewed with reverence and sarcastic shrines have been discovered with offerings of swollen lymph nodes and tumorous growths. Sarcastic cults treat contagions as consecration, a means to cull the weak and purify the masses, and thus actively seek to ensure their spread. The Foundation divides known sarcastic cults into two distinct strands. Proto-Sarkic and Neo-Sarkic. Proto-Sarkic cults can be found in insular communities throughout Eurasia's most isolated regions, its followers generally poor, if self-reliant, humble, and hostile towards outsiders. Such groups eschew modernity, display acute technophobia, and are bound by superstition and taboo. In contrast, Neo-Sarkic cults are cosmopolitan, publicly embracing modernity and showing no apparent qualms with technology their public lives differing little from others of their culture and social status. Adherents are primarily affluent families, rich in history and scandal. Both generally follow a single creed whose core beliefs include the following concepts. Apotheosis The belief that an individual can ascend to godhood. It appears that sarcasm regards Grand Karsus Ion, and to a lesser extent his clavigar, as a being who has undergone apotheosis. For the proto sarkite Apotheosis will be achieved in time and only through Ion. For the neo sarkite it almost appears that if one had the ability to usurp Ion, it is their right, if not duty, to do so. The path to apotheosis is equal to the will to power. Will The will to power is the primary driving force of man. The individual seeks to master all things within his domain, exerting the direction of power efficacy, while other individuals do the same, often in opposition. Will is the power as form is to matter. In turn, desire is the measure of all things. Footnote 2 Desire is the measure of all things. Be unbound from moral tethers. Do as you will, to whom you will. Sarkic Proverb Theophagy Footnote 3 Theos, God, and the suffix phagy, to feed on, to eat, devour. The sacramental consumption of a god Sarcasism holds that there are many gods in the universe, none of which they worship, and that these entities can be devoured in some fashion. Adherents ultimately believe that this parasitic relationship, whether literal or allegorical, is the primary source of their thaumaturgical abilities. Sacrifice Among proto sarkic cults, this appears to manifest as the sacrifice of the self for the benefit of the many. Neo sarkic cults, in stark contrast, believe in the sacrifice of the many for the benefit of the individual. Muscle suffers damage, only to heal and become stronger than before. The same can be said for the mind, though developing toleration against conventionally inconceivable things. Cycles of destruction and regeneration. Strife, according to sarcasism, is the greatest of tutors. To shepherd the flesh. It is believed that all living things descend from a single progenitor further explored in the mythology section. Adherents hold that this shared ancestry is the key to corporeal augmentation, further suggesting a singular understanding of genetics cloaked beneath layers of mysticism. Footnote 4 Wary, English-speaking Sarkites will usually refer to this as the blood. It is the right of the Sarkite to guide and cultivate organic matter. proto sarkites appear to believe that Ion is in the process of achieving apotheosis and, upon the completion of his metamorphosis, will destroy this flawed, stillborn universe and remake it into a paradise known as the Ekanan, 
where the many will at long last know salvation and joy beneath rose-colored skies. Neo-Sarkic cults notably diverge from this interpretation, holding that Ion has already achieved apotheosis, and that one should strive to be as Ion and become like the gods through the acquisition of power, the development of skill, and the severing of ethical tethers that limit the potential of the individual. Sarkites speak and write in a unique language that appears to be a syncretism of proto uralic Indo-European, and Chaos tongue, but primarily proto uralic Footnote 5 Greek, Chaos Tongue, a foundation term for a poorly understood language whose words commonly appear in Sarkicism and lacks any known human equivalent. It is speculated that such words were not intended for human vocal cords and pronunciation is merely a close approximate. Practitioners of Sarkicism or Sarkites do not actually refer to themselves as Sarkic, the term a prerogative employed by the ancient Mechanites for their enemies. Footnote 6 Predecessors of the Church of the Broken God Thought to be their true name, it was adopted by the Global Occult Coalition and later by the Foundation as part of Project Citra Artra. In truth, Sarkic cultists refer to their belief system as Nolka, and under no circumstances are Foundation agents to use Sarkic or its derivatives from infiltrating related cults. Footnote 7 From proto uralic Noxley plus Ka, meaning hunger. Through adopting mechanite terminology, the Foundation and Global Occult Coalition have unwittingly perpetrated the flesh McCain cosmic narrative of the Church of the Broken God, which is an inaccurate and gross simplification of what Sarkicism entails. Footnote 8 quote, I believe this relationship to be the result of self fulfilling prophecy on the part of the mechanites. When Sarkicism was first encountered, it strongly resembled an end times adversary foretold by mechanite schema, the flesh. Unsurprisingly, the Mechanites made a connection that was hardly felt by the Sarkites in return. For Sarkicism, the Mechanites were simply another people that stood in their way, not some prophesied spiritual foe. Dr. Lowe. While this document aims to recognize and correct previous errors, Sarkic and its derivatives remain a normative part of the Foundation lexicon. Based on available information, the speculated goals of Sarkic cults nevertheless represent an SK-class dominance shift, including the possibility of an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario. It is important to understand that Sarkicism is not only a system of beliefs, but an ancient culture that has, in secret, preserved its own language, traditions, and societal norms, while outwardly adopting the dominant culture of the lands they inhabit. To comprehend the Sarkic psychology, one must remember how their minds are shaped by their distinct social environment. Thus, behavior that would be considered beyond the pale to most murder, torture, rape, etc. might be perfectly acceptable among Sarkites. Footnote 9. For Proto-Sarkites, such actions are committed zealously for some perceived greater good. For Neo-Sarkites, it manifests in a most libertine manner. To be as gods, one must not be bound by mortal concepts of morality. Nothing sacred, nothing taboo. Dr. Fashionbauer. Letters between Neo-Sarkic cult members have been deciphered revealing a fairly intricate caste system outside the religious hierarchy. A form of pedigree, it appears that Neo-Sarkites place heavy emphasis on bloodline, a hidden aristocracy whose marriages forms pacts and the foundation of powerful Sarkic families, referred to by followers as high bloods, sometimes black bloods. Footnote 10 The concept does not appear to exist among proto-Sarkic cults. Indeed, the idea of caste contradicts the egalitarian beliefs common to early Sarkicism. Dr. Lowe. Footnote 11. This is likely a play on blue bloods, a term for nobility and other affluent people. One is generally born into Sarkicism, with new blood introduced through careful selection. It is difficult to draw a line between cult and family in Sarkicism. The recruitment of outsiders is usually unnecessary, as Sarkites have little trouble maintaining their numbers, their virility and health apparently unaffected by generations of inbreeding. Even non-Karsists, Karsists and above being biologically immortal, Sarkites have significantly lower rates of mortality when compared to that of an average human, 
rarely dying before reaching a hundred, unless by violence or accident. Footnote 12. Indeed, a circuit community was once discovered by studying late medieval census data and searching for populations with unusually low mortality rates, most especially those whose numbers were unaffected by pandemics such as the Black Death. Dr. Lowe. Footnote 13. Note. It is also possible that, upon reaching a certain age, Neosarkites falsify their deaths and spend the rest of their anomalously extended lives away from public view. Data suggests that hierarchical structures are generally consistent between Sarkic cults, having remained relatively unchanged for at least over the last 3,000 years. The two highest tiers, Ozamark Grand Carsis, and Clavigar High Carsis, have not been verified outside of scripture and ancient documents, rendering it difficult to discern whether these ranks are truly part of the modern Sarkid hierarchy or serve as a mostly mythical foundation. With that said, the standard hierarchy, from highest to lowest, consists of Ozermach, also known as the Grand Carcist, the highest tier reserved for the Prophet Ion and no other. Ion is further discussed throughout the document. Clavigar, also known as High Carcist, roughly analogous to a saint. The names of four Clavigar are presently known. It is common for neo sarkites to claim ancestry from a Clavigar. See the Hagiography subsection of history for information about individual Clavigar. Carcist, the spiritual and secular leaders among Sarkit organizations. Carcists are considered biologically immortal and vary in form and anomalous ability. Footnote 14. Although all known Karsas appear to have once been non-anomalous humans, only some maintain a human visage. It is theorized that they are able to control their holocausts via the release of complex pheromones. It is assumed that Clavigar and the Ozamark wield similar influence. Footnote 15. A group of anomalous organic entities controlled by a Karsist. Volotar. Advisors to a Karsist, predominantly female among proto sarkic cults for reasons unknown. Zend, a midland rank of the Sarkid hierarchy, have a degree of power and protection unlike the Orin. Orin, the lowest rank of the Sarkid hierarchy, adherents who do not descend from a Sarkid bloodline begin at this level. Cosmology the observable universe is one among a finite or infinite number of possible universes contained within the meta-universe. Each universe can, in turn, be divided into a finite or infinite number of iterations. The structure of the meta-universe, the natural laws which allow for the manifestation of universes, is eternal, without beginning or end. Universes, on the other hand, are created and eventually destroyed. Beyond this, Sarkic cosmology is fairly simple by virtue of the indifference of its adherents. Existence is regarded as an entirely brute fact, corruptible, discordant, and devoid of purpose. Yalda Bayoth, also known as Vazjuma, God-eater, devourer, his undulating vastness, the great winnower, and various other epithets, is regarded in Sarkicism as the principal power in the universe. Footnote 16. A name thought to be first employed by Gnostic and Mechanite sects. Footnote 17. Literature. The Old God. Despite being treated with reverence, Yaldabaoth is not worshipped and appears to be regarded as subservient to Ion in some manner. Translated fragments of the Valkzeron suggest that Ion has somehow usurped control of this cosmic entity, wearing the flesh of the God-eater as a sort of armor and crafting from its body a kingdom. As with all things related to Sarkicism, it is difficult to discern reality from myth. The relationship between Sarkicism and this entity may be akin to that of a parasite and its host, or perhaps even symbolic. The wound, cut from the flesh of totality, deep, it severed the line of future and past. Drawn to its ancient fester, God swarmed as flies to a corpse. We waited within bloodless veins, faithful to that which we could not know, unable to imagine that we might become their greater. Here we slept until our souls became flesh. San Alku Yalda Baoth is portrayed as both destroyer and incidental creator, feeding upon gods and stars and exhaling life. Life is thus a natural byproduct of the God Eater's existence, unguided by intelligence and spreading through a process not entirely dissimilar from panspermia. 
Footnote 18. The theory that life exists and is distributed throughout the universe in the form of germs and spores that develop in the right environment. Blind and driven solely by instinct, Yalda Beoth is depicted as being accompanied by six otherworldly entities known as Archons, or Voltus, among certain proto-Sarkic cults. These beings are described by Sarkic texts as faceless manifestations of primordial chaos, their true forms inconceivable to the human mind. Gnostic and Mechanic scripture would mention the Archons as well, describing them as terrible and rapacious angels. The swine herd prostrated himself before the Sorcerer King and asks, Great Sorcerer King and Azamok, heart of man and light of lights, I speak for the folk of the Cold Marsh. We fear the red lanterns that dance without harmony. Our spirit guides warn of ill omens. And Ion did assure the man. I have gazed upon the faceless ones, servitors of his undulating vastness. Their chief is blind, castrated by our words and will. He sings songs of anarchy, but they will not come again. These terrible spirits do not deserve our love. Render unto them no sacrifice until the stars have aligned. San Vith. The six ordeals of Ion refer to six challenges issued to Ion by the Archons. Through enduring their trials, Ion is said to have mastered the rituals and practices ubiquitous to Sarcasism, breaking free from the bondage of mortal limitations. Further information about Ion's relationship with Yaldabaoth and his Archons, as well as the nature of the ordeals, remains unknown. Footnote 19. Although relevant sons are believed to be recorded within the Elovonklos, a known but unrecovered Sarkic grimoire, and to his flock Ion thus spoke. I have stepped beyond the flow of dreams, stood before the Old Ones within their own desolate domain. I have endured their intolerable force, across countless eons. I have seen the infinite dead worlds, murdered Death herself. I have read the entrails of our Creator, beheld eternity unfurled. Know that our paradise draws near, and with their own flesh shall we birth it. Sun Skull. Most information regarding circuit history and mythology is sourced to the Bodfell Codex. Recovered from SCP-2480, the Codex includes a partial translation of the Valkyron and related marginalia. Along with archaeological evidence, the Foundation have been able to establish the historiosity of Sarkicism. As essential as the Codex has been, large gaps remain in the timeline and much of the following is entirely speculative and subject to change. Early History Sarkic weapons, armor, and trinkets have been discovered among Minoan ruins on the island of Santorini, formerly Thera, possibly placing their origins to at least before the eruption event which triggered the complete collapse of Minoan civilization around 1500 BCE. Footnote 20. Not enough to suggest an invasion and occupation, more likely the items arrived via Minoan merchants and Central Asian trade routes. It is presently believed that Sarcasism itself did not reach the Mediterranean until approximately 1200 BCE, theoretically related to the Bronze Age Collapse. Davite tablets, dated to approximately 1800 BCE, refer to a slave rebellion in the northernmost province, led by a charismatic Heresiarch and Half-Blood. Scrolls discovered within contain phrases and terms archetypal to Sarkic cults, including references to a Grand Karsis Ion. These findings suggest that Sarkicism has existed for nearly 4,000 years. All evidence, linguistically and archaeologically, points to Western Siberia as Sarkicism's place of origin. Ion, if still alive, if having ever existed at all, likely represents a high-level reality bender and has been classified as POI-93. Footnote 21 Classified by the GOC as KTE-0452- Black forward slash four severe threat in 1952. This represents the earliest secular analysis of Ion. Little is known about the Grand Carsis, sorcerer king of Adatum, with all information being in the form of deification or demonization and lacking in factual reliability. Footnote 22. A city of unnumbered, unspeakable crimes, according to the ancient Mechanites, considered the capital of Sarkicism. It remains unknown if the location continues to exist in some manner. 
The Valkyron refers to Ion having been born to a Davite mother and sired by a concubus father, implying that males born of such unions were destined for slavery. The exact nature of Ion's bondage is unknown, but his supposed intellect suggests that he was not used for combat or manual labor, perhaps serving under an alchemist or priestess. It remains unknown which came first, Ion's doctrine or his revolution. It remains unknown which came first. Ion's doctrine or his revolution. If these events are grounded in reality, it is possible that the religion developed in coincidence with a slave revolt and as a way to codify their methods of anomalous warfare. In his mission, Ion was aided by four individuals known as the Clavigar, figures of reverence and supposed disciples of Ion. They are the saints of sarcasism. Hagiography Clavigar Nadox Associated with intelligence, wisdom, Perception and Mysteries. Epithets include the Tongueless Speaker, Lord of Mysteries, the Alcyon, and the Anticipation of Ion. Once a sage in the southernmost region of Davite influence, he preached a philosophy of peace and equality, building a following among the impoverished. Agitating the Deva, he was captured and publicly tortured, the poor he had tried to help now hurling stones upon him. Before the crowd of hundreds, Drunk and atrocious in their stupidity, a Deva priestess cut off his tongue, sewed shut his mouth, and had him emasculated. Footnote 23 The complete removal of the penis and the testicles, an apparently common form of punishment among the matriarchal Davites. Rather than having Nadox executed, they instead had him marked, a symbol placed upon the forehead, impossible to remove, it designated him as a sufferer. One who the people were required, by the Deva's decree, to forever torment but never kill. Nadox wandered the land as a pariah, denied refuge and safe passage, struck with rocks and slashed with knives, all by the people he had hoped to save. It is written that he beheld, while suffering a fever dream, a messianic entity, one that could rescue him and humanity from an existence of suffering and tears. Nadox would travel north in search of the Savior to guide Ion towards his destiny. And Ion held six fingers aloft, and upon their spears did the soldiers impale themselves. For you, they cried before the blood drowned their tongues, and Ion said, Now do you see? And Nadox wept, as more did skewer themselves in Ion's name, for he had seen and now knew the truth of his words. Son Surus Clavigar Lobatar Associated with sex, love, eroticism, pleasure, motherhood, disease, and unrestrained reproduction, breeding, cancers, growth, etc. Epithets include the one whom Ion most desired, the high blood redeemer, and the mother, on rare occasion brood or hive mother. A priestess, as well as the daughter of a Deva matriarch, she was initially in opposition to Ion, whose revolution threatened her way of life. It is written that her hatred for Ion eventually became a sort of infatuation. Unable to remove him from her mind, she sought to capture and bind him as her consort. In her quest to make him hers, Lovatar sent wave after wave of slave hunters, but none returned. In time, it would be Ion who came to her by its own accord. It is written that Ion visited her in the night, bypassing her guards and appearing within her bedchamber. Instead of attacking, he sat upon the edge of the bed and quietly spoke to her. What was said is unknown, but resulted in Lobatar and Ion forming a union over a period of twelve days. Footnote 24 It is written that the words were meant for Lobatar alone and thus never recorded. On the twelfth day, the two left her palace behind, never to return. Beneath the black moon, her devotion took the form of a stone knife, like those of the reindeer folk of Adium. Penetrated amber blood colored by ancient sins poured from the wound, her tears like the warm rain of distant summers. Beneath the poison moon, the amber flowed no more, and the snow she painted red. Indecipherable for Ion, who drank deep the fermented honey of Lobatar's kiss, Ion surrendered upon her pale breast, a shared respite and ecstasy. Still, Ion hungered, and from Lobatar's dark lips flowed words. There is pleasure in serving. Smiling, he bowed lowered his head, knowing the drunk joy of milk and sweet fermented honey. Son Tao. Clavigar Orok. A figure of reverence and supposed disciple of Ion, associated with strength, war, violence, wilderness, 
hunting and seemingly in contradiction, loyalty and revolt. Epithets include the Horned Beast, the Brute Lord, and the Pale Hunter. Described as being of unnatural physical strength, Orok was the product of alchemical and thermaturgical experimentation on slaves, enthralled the matriarch Asvigosa, the ruling deva in the city of Jell. Orok served as a bodyguard and pit fighter. Footnote 25 Apparently considered the greatest gladiatorial combatant of his time. It is written that Ion, when taking the city of Jell, entered the palace of Matriarch Asvigosa, presumably the highest authority in the city. He requested that the Matriarch should leave and take with her a message to the Deva of Devas, lest she suffer retribution. Refusing his ultimatum, the Matriarch ordered Orok to destroy him. It is written that Orok hesitated his runes of bondage, setting his starved soul aflame so that his body became spirit. Turning to his matriarch, he struck Asvigosa, his fist imbued with the very power she had forced upon him and reduced her body to cinder and ash and heavenly starlight. As Orok said to the Kytherans, power is made from the pain of the fragile. Here weakness dies. Here strength is born. I exert myself. A pale reflection of Ion's sacrifice of flesh to the intolerable force, and shed frailty's husk. I commune with my Akaloth core, my sacred metamorphosis complete. Son Susk. Footnote 26. Kythra is a location that appears in both Sarkic and Church of the Broken God scripture. The Valkzeron describes the conquest of Kythra and the conversion of its people. The Maxwellian Book of Horrors associates the location with the processized NK-class end-of-the-world scenario. Footnote 27 A symbolic organism implanted in the bodies of Sarkic cultists, further discussed in the organism section. Clavigar Sarn A figure of reverence and supposed disciple of Ion, associated with darkness, secrecy, deception, poison, assassination and justice, or Jaka. Footnote 28 Jaka translate as divide, separate, or even coal. It is employed in Socratism as a concept of cosmic justice, separating the strong from the weak, adherent from apostate, terminating those deemed enemy or unnecessary. Epithets include the Whisperer, the Coiled Shadow, the Faceless One, and the Judgment of Ion. A young house servant, she quietly endured daybite abuse throughout her life. Having suffered long enough, she calmly murdered the entire household with poison, garret, and dagger. Captured, she would be imprisoned within the fortress city of Cursed. Footnote 29 The first to fall so that he might rise. Said to be the first kingdom to fall to Aditum, and having become symbolic of the inevitable defeat of those who stand in opposition to Sarcasism. Sarn was awaiting execution when first approached by Ion, who moved through the dungeon walls like the mist of summer snow melt. There, he said, the winds whispered of your actions. There is no evil in the judgment. You do not choose to be the vessel of our will. Many will die this day, but you are needed alive. The prophet's hand is described as having transformed into a wolfish maw, tearing apart the cell door with its teeth and liberating Sarn. Honing her skills, Sarn would eventually control a network of spies and assassins. A daybite tablet describes her efficacy in graphic detail, including men and women disemboweled in the streets and daybite infants strangled in their own cradles by traitorous servants. The heart is made silent still, before her dagger seen, a moment immortalized in a single strike stab, the judgment unavoidable, inescapable, dismay, a death inconceivable, to the arrogance of Deva, triumph, a dagger in the darkness. With the blood of tyrants, our children sleep well. Sun Vaku. There is little available information about Sarcasism between circa 1600 and circa 1200 BCE, despite the period being considered the golden age of Sarkis civilization. It is during this period that Davite culture recedes, existing only as a small city-state in what is now Mongolia. Footnote 30. It has been hypothesized that the Davites sought to anomalously preserve themselves, as more and more territory was lost to Sarkites. It is theorized that the Adium Empire left little archaeological evidence for its existence due to Sarkic structures being composed of living organic material. War and the Fall of the Adium Empire Sarkic civilization, having reached its zenith, began to spread into Caucasus, Anatolia, Balkans, and parts of the Levant and the Mesopotamia. Impressed by or fearful of their anomalous capabilities, several tribal groups began to fight under the banner of Adium. 
These include Cascians, Proto-Thracians, Lycians, Ilians, and many others. The Hittite king, Supalulumia II, tried in vain to defeat the invaders, contributing to the fall of the Hittite Empire. Footnote 31. This information, as with all information involving sarcasm, cannot be revealed to the public. Fortunately, most non-Foundation historians blame the events of the Late Bronze Age collapse on the mysterious Sea Peoples. The Adium Empire established a foothold in the Mediterranean, invading and colonizing the islands of Cyprus, Crete, and Garros. It is uncertain as to who struck first, but a coalition of kingdoms was formed in response to the Sarkit threat, resulting in a war around 1200 BCE. Archaeological findings such as mass graves, weapons, terrain damage, and primary source documents, such as scrolls recovered from Garros and the Aral Sea, reveal the extreme and anomalous nature of the war. Foundation historians estimate a death toll ranging from 20 to 30 million, making it the fourth most devastating war in recorded history. According to recovered documents, the coalition formed in response to the Adium Empire included Egyptians, Mycenaean Greeks, Minoans, Canaanites, Assyrians, and the Mechanites. Footnote 32. It appears that Minoan's conspirators fought on the side of the Adium Empire. Minoan civilization had been on decline at the time of the war. Footnote 33. The Mechanites are theorized as having been the driving force for the coalition, seeking allies against a threat perceived by them as the end of the world. Although Greek in origin, the cult of Mechane had temples throughout the Mediterranean, most notably in Egypt and the Levant. Most details of the war are unknown to the Foundation. It is suspected that the deployment of colossi, such as SCP-2406, as well as the heavy use of a substance resembling Greek fire that turned the tide of war against the Sarkites. Footnote 34 Traditionally thought as having been deployed circa 672 CE. When the war was over, the Adium Empire was assumed destroyed along with Sarkic civilization. In reality, Sarkicism would continue in secret at both its homeland and the Urals, and among the tribes that have fought under the banner of Adium, such as among the Thracians and Dacians. The damage to the region was great, and many civilizations did not recover, resulting in the collapse of various kingdoms. A crisis of refugees, the decline of art, literature, science and technology, and the lingering disease and famine from Sarkic biological weapons, an event later known to historians as the Late Bronze Age Collapse. The fall of the Adium Empire also resulted in a Sarkic diaspora, leading to the development of culturally distinct Sarkic cults in places such as the Arabian Peninsula and the Indian subcontinent. Due to a lack of reliable information, the Foundation can only speculate about Sarkic activity between circa 1100 BCE and 1300 CE. The Rise of Neo-Sarkicism the majority of known Neo-Sarkic cults appear to descend from certain Carpathian noble families influenced by the Proto-Sarkic Solomonari. Footnote 35 The Hunter's Black Lodge being the only known Neo-Sarkic cult to not share this lineage. This is likely subject to change as the Foundation uncovers more Sarkic organizations. It is unknown whether the Solomonari intentionally infiltrated Carpathian courts, or if they were instead sought out by the nobles themselves, ignoring or dismissing, possibly embracing the rumors of devil worship and witchcraft surrounding the cult. Documents and artifacts retrieved from SCP suggest that some Solomonari served as court magicians, advising their lords and ladies on matters of alchemy, medicine, astrology, and the occult. In time, this would result in the development of Sarkic great houses, affluent families practicing their own interpretation of Sarkicism, placing the individual above the collective and applying it to their own self-serving needs. This new strain of Sarkicism would spread throughout Europe via marriage. Once these footholds were established, the great houses grew incestuous. Individual orders vary by region, but can be divided into two primary types, Proto-Sarkit and Neo-Sarkit. These do not appear to represent divergent beliefs so much as environmental adaptations. Practitioners of Proto-Sarkicism do not operate in the open unless the location is significantly isolated. 
Such sects display acute technophobia and eschew modernity, willing to go so far as to destroy or disable advanced electronics when encountered. Footnote 36 Communication devices appear to be considered especially abhorrent. Proto-Sarkic cults generally value humility and self-sacrifice. Known Orders GOI-0246 The Solomonari The ancestors of the Solomonari likely settled in the Carpathian Basin between 1200 and 600 BCE. Footnote 37 Also historically recorded as the Grimtes or Holton. It is presently hypothesized that the Sarkites assimilated the local Proto-Thracian people, eventually becoming the Dacians, a people recorded by ancient Greek and Roman sources. A Sarkic stronghold, since classified as SCP, was discovered in the southern Carpathians and is believed to have once been the heart of the Solomonari cult. Footnote 38 Corresponding with the given location of the legendary Skullamance, a school of black magic and Romanian folklore. It has been hypothesized that the Solomonari are related to, or one and the same as, the Dacian cult of Zalmoxis, having culturally melded with the ancient Proto-Thracian people. Documents discovered at SCP and SCP-2191 suggest that the Solomonari remained highly influential, albeit secretive, until the 15th century possibly destroyed by John Hunyadi, a leading Hungarian military and political figure. Several boyars of Wallachia and Moldavia, most notably the Gutkild clan of Hungarian nobles, are now believed to have been under the control of the Solomonari, an influence that would lead to the development of neo sarcasism and its western expansion. It remains debatable whether modern practitioners should be considered true Solomonari, an event of what has been learned at SCP. Most are located in isolated pockets throughout the Carpathians, with little to no connection with one another. The religion, in its current state, is an amalgam of local folk traditions and Solomonari blood rituals. GOI-0074 Church of the Red Harvest The Church of the Red Harvest were discovered at SCP-2133 in 1936 by Gru Division P. The Foundation became aware of the sect shortly after gaining control of SCP-2133 following the dissolution of the USSR. SCP-2133 is an unnamed village located in the northern Ural Mountains, whose denizens are the only known members of the Church of the Red Harvest. The Church practices a regeneration ritual. The recent dead harvested a newborn from the turnip field found throughout SCP-2133. Members refer to the regenerative process as a part of an old covenant, one that cannot be broken, and is the last until the return of paradise. Aditum. It is currently believed that the Church of the Red Harvest is directly controlled by a Karsist, Karsist Alka, located in a subterranean dwelling beneath the nearby mountains, connected to the village by a series of tunnels accessible via the village church. GOI-0041 The Vatula the Vatula were initially mistaken for Agori due to several superficially similar rituals. Footnote 39 Ascetic Shaiva status known to engage in post-mortem rituals. Known to the Foundation since 1969, a Sarkic connection was only established in 2010 through extensive research. The Vatula command fear and respect among the rural poor in the Indian states of Rajasthan, Hamachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Haryana, Punjab, and Gujarat. They trace their origins to Karsis Vasky, whom they claim arrived from the northwest, granting them his blessing and spreading a virulent plague to their enemies. neo sarcasism displays only a superficial resemblance to historical and current proto sarkic sects, whereas proto sarcasism is isolated and archaic, bound by superstition and taboo, neo sarcasism embraces modernity, whereas proto sarcasism is fragmented, each group existing within a vacuum, neo sarcasism is cosmopolitan and unified. It remains unknown whether neo sarkic cults represent a relatively recent development or a willing evolution of proto sarkic sects. neo sarkites display no qualms with technology and may be found in heavily populated locations, 
their daily lives differing little from others of their culture and social status. For neo-sarkic cults, the proper moral purpose of one's life is the pursuit of one's own desires and the attainment of power. GOI-0490 Adatum's Wake Active throughout the northeastern United States, Adatum's Wake is thought to be the oldest circuit organization in North America, with evidence of their existence dating as far back as 1650. The organization was presumably destroyed on November 28, 1952, but not before the creation of SCP-2480, considered by the founders of Project Citra Artra to represent the first shots of what would become a complex and invisible conflict. Cornelius P. Bodfell III, Carsus Sulkist, a millionaire industrialist with an acute interest in the occult, was the acting leader of Adatum's Wake until his death in 1952. Dismissed by the Foundation in 1932 as merely another decadent social club, their anonymous capabilities were not recognized until the November 28, 1952 incident. The Foundation fears that Adatum's Wake survived its initial defeat. It is theorized that the renewed cult is presently under the control of Vivian Durant Croy, President and CEO of the Durant Bodfell Financial Group, wife of Hungarian national Alexander Croy, CEO of Abraxas Arms, and a suspected Sarkite. GOI 0432 The Hunter's Black Lodge GOI 0432 is an anomalous criminal cult primarily active in the post Soviet states, known as the Hunter's Black Lodge or simply the Black Lodge. GOI-0432 has been linked to extortion, murder, robbery, gambling, prostitution, human trafficking, drug trafficking, weapons trafficking, and underground fighting rings. While these activities are not inherently anomalous, the anomalous capabilities of GOI-0432 has had an aberrant effect on their practice. The Foundation first became aware of the Black Lodge in the early 1990s after receiving a tip from informants in Interpol. Further investigation uncovered GOI-0432 related documents from the recently dissolved GRU Division P, later corroborated by former members. It appears that GRU Division P was unable to fully contain or neutralize the threat presented by the Black Lodge, with one source describing them as a Hydra. The organization thought neutralized on several occasions, only for it to reappear months later, stronger than before. Victims of the Black Lodge have been discovered impaled, penetrated by large organic spines, the decedents commonly showing evidence of ritual cannibalism. Footnote 40. These spines appear superficially chitinous, and despite showing strong structural similarities to coral, contain human DNA. GOI-0385 Esoteric Order of the White Worm Active primarily throughout Europe, the Esoteric Order of the White Worm Ferrofarig Esotericus Grind is a circuit cult disguised as an occult-themed fraternal organization, similar to other secret societies. The existence of the cult is an open secret, while its true nature is unknown to the general population. Footnote 41 An order, organization, society, or a club of men associated together for various religious or secular aims. Despite being referred to as fraternal, the esoteric order of the White Worm is open to men and women. Footnote 42. Although, like other such groups, it has been the subject of various conspiracy theories, the Foundation does not believe that there is much factual basis to such claims. Based on documents recovered from the SCP archives, the Esoteric Order may be one of the earliest neo sarkid sects. Founded by Hungarian nobles heavily influenced by their Solomonari court magicians, the religion transformed from a hidden pagan faith to a secret tool of the landed gentry. Descendants of House Voros, a Hungarian noble family, are thought to dominate the leadership positions of the Esoteric Order. The creation and manipulation of living organisms through anomalous means represents the most immediate threat posed by sarcasism. Footnote 43 DNA analysis suggests that some circuit organisms have been created through a process of artificial selection, breeding organisms, including humans, to the point where they no longer resemble their ancestors. Enough patterns have been discovered among these organisms that they can be divided into different species. 
These organisms display no sign of fear or pain, and regenerate injuries at an anomalous rate. Below is a partial list of such entities. SK Biotype A Colloquially referred to as behemoths by personnel, these entities are commonly over 4 meters tall, weighing approximately 7,000 kilograms, with pale, flabby skin. Lacking visible eyes, ears, and noses, their face is dominated by a large, toothy mouth. The first recorded instance of an SK Biotype A was SCP-2480-2. They appear to be of limited intelligence. SK Biotype B Generally 1.5 to 2 meters tall and weigh approximately 250 kilograms. Mouths are vertical, running the length of what approximates a face. Spindly fingers end in 50 to 60 centimeter talons. Bodies are partially protected by white, chitinous carapace. The flesh beneath dark red and visible and movable joints. SK Biotype Delta, also classified as SCP-2191-1. SK Biotype Delta are considered genetically human but have undergone several significant, seemingly fatal mutations. SK Biotype Delta lack all major internal organs with the exception of the lungs, heart, and brainstem. The outer epidermis lacks pigmentation and displays a condition resembling cracked porcelain, possibly related to Harlequin Syndrome. Entities appear androgynous, lacking or having somehow removed secondary sex characteristics. The regressed eyes are covered by a layer of skin, rendering them mostly blind but still able to react to light, universally displaying a version of wavelengths greater than 100 nanometers. Further deviations from baseline Homo sapiens include especially flat, upturned noses and funnel-shaped ears, both considered related to their dependency on olfactory and auditory perception. They do not appear to communicate via language, the only sound produced being a persistent clicking of the tongue, speculated to be a form of echolocation. SK Biotype Delta, colloquially referred to as snatchers by personnel, prehensile organic structures dark red in color and with a tentacoloid shape. SK Biotype Delta are sedentary and are generally used by Sarkites to guard specific locations. SK Biotype E Known to Sarkites as a Karak, instances of SK Biotype E are organic, biologically living structures used as temples. The Foundation presently has the deceased instance, SCP-2095, in containment but other, possibly living instances are theorized to exist across the world. Update. Living instances have been recently encountered by field agents. Further information is pending. The creation of a Karak is more terrible than initially hypothesized. A living human is anointed, then repeatedly fed and shaped, its brain slowly atrophying as it becomes a living temple. The Sarkites cultivate flesh and bone as one might tend a bonsai tree. Dr. Tsukino SK Biotype Z, known to Sarkite as an Akaloth and his sacred white worm, instances of SK Biotype Z are symbiotic organisms found in the bodies of both Sarkites and Sarkite organisms. It is believed that they act as a secondary immune system, protecting the host against disease as well as greatly increasing their regenerative abilities. SK Biotype Z is also believed to be connected to the physical transformations some Sarkites undergo. SK Biotype H SK Biotype H may exist as or be composed of multiple species and generally refers to any SK Biotype that lacks a stable physical form, although this can occur in many if not all circuit organisms is critically injured. Existing as a gelatinous mass, such organisms are able to increase their size, with no known limit, by absorbing the biomass of those it encounters. An individual can be converted to an SK Biotype H by ritual, as encountered when SCP-2075 caused the transfiguration and subsequent death of Dr. Albert Cronenberg.